Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you in the month of December, since it is Christmas time and the holiday time, about Sabrina the Teenage Witch Season 2, Sabrina Claus. So I decided to review Season 2 Christmas episode instead of Season 1, only because in Season 1, there isn't much Christmas stuff going on. Basically, it's just like Sabrina wants her privacy. Salem's always in her stuff. He hides in her bag. He goes on dates with her. And then he gets like kidnapped and then she's upset and you know, stuff like that. So I decided to do number two because number two has a lot more Christmas stuff. So basically, um, this entails Sabrina being very, very, very greedy for Christmas. Basically, her inner child comes out and she constantly just wants like everything she wants for Christmas and always talking about, I want this, I want that. You know, her list goes like on and on and on, right? <clears throat> and so, with the aunts, they are they're decorating the house and they want, uh, well, pretty much, you know, Zelda, she like. Uh, creates like a tree, but then Hilda's kind of, no, 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 wait, not Zelda, Hilda, Hilda creates the tree, but then Zelda's kind of like, ah, oh, you know, why don't we do this the mortal way and everything, and so, um, uh, Hilda unzaps the tree, and then Zelda's kind of like, you know, where do they sell trees? <laughs> and then Hilda's like, the forest? Because <laughs> they've never, ever, ever bought like a Christmas tree and done things the moral way. They've always done things with magic and just created the, the flick of their finger and stuff. So, like, it's a really cool montage of seeing them coming in with this giant Christmas tree and then them trying to like put it up and they can't. Then they try to like saw it in so they can put it on the little um, peg, um, the little um, um, bracket thing. The base, it's just like hilarious. And then Salem, of course, is just razzling. Now, I gotta say, Salem's appearance in this season, I love it. It's one of my favorites, except for his ears. His ears are a little too big and pointy. So, in the first season, Salem was just a regular black cat, like a real one. Then they decided to make a puppet. And when they made a puppet, they made it look very similar to that of the cat. But his face looked kind of odd. It looked real, but kind of like ugly. And then at some point, I think in season one, towards the end, they changed it to like, um, or at least in season two, they changed it to what you see now. And it's, it's more of a cutesy, um, cartoonish kind of face, but it still looks realistic, but in a cartoony, cute kind of way. And the only problem, like he has more facial movements and stuff. Only problem, like I said, is that, you know, his ears are way too pointy. Now, they do redesign him again, I think, in the third season or halfway into the second. They're constantly redoing him. And I gotta say, it's nice to hear him talk and make jokes and all this other stuff. That's a problem I had with the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Like, that cat did not talk. And, like... Yeah, I, I know Chilling Adventures in this one is completely different, completely different tone. But, you know, I just prefer this one better. Um, it's funnier. It, it, it's, it, the characters get along a lot better. Like, they, they interact better. They have more of a flow, you know what I'm saying? Like, Hilda and Zelda, they have more of a sisterly bond in this series and it seems more realistic than it ever did in the chilling adventures and stuff and sabrina and like this one seems more like a teen you know she's played by an adult and the other one's played by an adult too but she just she acts more like a bratty teen in this one so when she makes her mistakes and then um in this series you really feel it and then when people help her out you feel that too not in the other series though when she makes mistakes it just feels odd and then she corrects her mistakes like very quickly and it seems even odder and stuff but anyway so like i said before so in this um episode she is very greedy and very selfish and she just wants everything she wants for christmas to the point when she's at school she's constantly thinking about what she wants and she's daydreaming and stuff 
And so Harvey's taking on a job and Libby's talking about how like, you know, she has to deal with her new stepbrother and he's a brat. And then when Sabrina is staring at Libby, look on um, cause you know, um, Libby is talking to Harvey. She calls Sabrina like a freak and everything. Libby is the original Gina George, or Regina George and stuff, you know, from Mean Girls. And so like, the reason why Libby and Harvey aren't in this episode that much is because they have two special guest stars and like they cost a lot of money. <laughs> so they had to like, you know, the, 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 the main character had to do like a little bit of a cameo type thing. And so like when Sabrina is at lunch with Harvey, he doesn't like the lunch food because it's disgusting looking. So she's all like, she's going to conjure up a baked potato. And when she does it, she doesn't create one. She ends up stealing one from like this Russian man who's like really cold and hungry. And then so when she's um, at dinner with um, her aunt Hilda, she wants more like, I think like Brussels sprouts or asparagus or something she's eating. And so instead of conjuring it up, she ends up stealing Hilda's. And then Hilda's kind of like, something must be wrong with your magic. So she like, create something else. So Sabrina creates a, a blouse. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Zelda comes in with a trench coat and you see a lot of her cleavage. So you can kind of guess what's going to happen. <laughs> she walks in and she takes it off and she's, I don't know what you call this. Cause I'm not a woman. Um, it kind of looks like a bra, but a blouse. I think they call it a slip or something like that. And they actually showed all that <laughs> and everything. So Sabrina took her blouse by mistake. And so they're all like, hey, something is definitely wrong with like your magic and stuff. So like, uh, they send her to the other realm to talk to like a doctor. And so the doctor, I forget her name, I think she's really famous too. And so she makes Sabrina talk to her inner child. So we see the inner child of Sabrina and she keeps talking about, I'm on this, I'm on that, and blah, 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 blah. So the doctor knows exactly what's wrong with her. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> um, I think it's called like Christmas itis or Christmas something or another. It's basically she wants way too much. And because of that, her magic is on the fritz and instead of like creating stuff, it just steals and stuff like that. And so like they have to like fix her and stuff. And it's funny because, ah, uh, there's a guy really famous. He sings those Christmas songs like Silent Night. I think his name is Johnny something. I want to say Johnny M Martin, but I don't think it is. I don't know. But because she conjures up the CD, but she steals his personal CD and stuff. And he's one of those famous people that say it costs like a lot of money to be on the show. And um, I think he also sings Let It Snow or something like that. He's one of those dudes who do like them Christmas songs and he's really famous for that. So they realize they need to get somebody to help her. And there's only one person to do that. Some guy in the other realm named Bob, who's a big deal. And <laughs> this is what I'm saying with this show. Like, it's hilarious. Like, the way it's written is so clever when it was on ABC. I did not like this show when it went to the WB. The WB screwed this show up big time to where it wasn't funny or nothing like that. And they got rid of a lot of the characters that have been on the show since season one. They even got rid of the aunts. How do you get rid of them? You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I really want the complete series DVD, mainly because I want the um, Sabrina and Rome. <sighs> they don't make that DVD no more. You have to buy it in the box set, but I don't want the WB seasons at all. So it was kind of like... If I get it, like, I don't know, like, what I'm going to do with it? <laughs> I don't want to just buy this 30 something dollar thing just to, um, you know, <laughs> get one disc and one disc only. Because um, I already have season one and two on DVD and stuff. And so, like, oh, where I'm at? Um, oh, Bob. So it's so funny how they come up with stuff. So they're... The, the call him, the, the song is Bob, Bob, 
Bob. <laughs> it's just it's funny when they do it and stuff. And so he comes and he's and when people wondering like what's the deal with Bob? You know what I'm saying? Like why him? And so like he basically tells her you need to start doing good deeds for other people and and stop using your magic. So he takes her all around town and she does like a lot of nice stuff. She um, creates like a snowman. She um. I don't know, she doesn't like, she, she just, he just makes her do things that makes her not want to think of like Christmas gifts. Because, because of her um, illness, all her Christmas gifts are gone on the tree. They just mag magically disappear. That's part of like the illness and stuff. So he takes her around and, you know, they do other stuff to make her like not think about Christmas gifts. And so he then, like, he gets up and I think he hurts like his, ankle or something like that and he falls down so she takes him to like her house and the aunts are like crap what did you do and she's like well what he just hurt his ankle she's all like dude you like broke santa claus <laughs> and so yeah this is who this is who bob really is he's really santa claus and crap <laughs> and so like he tells her straight up like you know I can't, like, it's one of those have to save Christmas episodes. <laughs> so, like, he tells her, you need to go to the North Pole, talk to my um, elves, and deliver my Christmas gifts and stuff like that. So she goes over to the like, North Pole. And while he's there, he's having the aunts take care of him, like, um, every second. Like, he wants this and he wants that. He wants them to go to the store and buy that. He's becoming a pain in their butt. <laughs> so Salem goes with her. And um, so they're there. And the elves are going like crazy. But the elves are like normal size. Except for one dude. And they explain why that is. It's like they say people assume that all elves are short. All because of that one. I constantly run around the place on my mayday mayday and stuff. So they build a bunch of stuff. And. It's really neat because they just take wood and they chop the wood and then it becomes like electronic like device and stuff. So um, they make all the stuff and they know they have to rush because they're like behind. And so like it's one of those frantic type like elf type thing. And then they're all like, well, you know, Santa can't deliver the gifts and I think the reindeer, something's wrong with them. So Sabrina has to deliver all the gifts and she does it on her magic flying vacuum cleaner <laughs> yeah in this series they went away from the whole maroon thing and went with the whole vacuum cleaner because that's more modern <laughs> so she's like but then it's interesting because when she creates her um well when she conjures up her vacuum cleaner it's fine so it's kind of like hmm she must be getting better so then she flies around she delivers gifts and she gives, she uses her magic on Libby to make her stepbrother nicer. So therefore she is now cured, but she doesn't realize it because she's too busy like having a good time delivering gifts. And when she comes back, Bob has now transformed into Santa Claus and stuff. Um, outfit, beard, like you name it and stuff. And he tells them straight up, you know, I faked my illness, my ankle hurting, so that Sabrina could learn the true meaning of Christmas and stuff. And that was a good lesson for her to learn because, you know, she learned that it's better to give than receive and stuff. And so, oh, I forget exactly how it ends. I know Harvey comes over and Sabrina used her magic on him. And then they kiss like under the mistletoe and stuff. And, hmm. Oh, the, the, the aunts. So when they put their Christmas tree together, it looks like a hot mess. <laughs> so they're all like, you wanna do this the magic way? She's like, yes. And then she zaps the original tree that she zapped in like the um, beginning of the episode. So I gotta say, even though I hate when they have to save Christmas type episode, it was pretty enjoyable. Like this was a funny episode. It was nice to see like a classic. Um, I remember watching this as a kid and a teenager. One of my favorite things about watching this, and I feel bad for saying this, but 
All I remember is seeing legs, 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 legs. Because back in this show, they used to always wear short mini skirts for some reason. And that's why I always like come to my, like as a teenager, like I loved it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and stuff. And so like, I've always loved this show. I've always loved the cast. Um, it's funny because the two aunts get started on Chilling the Adventures of Sabrina. And um, it was a weird kind of episode. And, um, but of course, Sabrina, Melissa John Hart herself did not appear on it. Not sure why. She's never given an explanation, but I think it has to do with religion because she's like a super Christian. And that show was like demonic and talking about the devil and stuff like that, you know? So that was not her cup of tea. <laughs> bah humbug. That was a good episode. All right, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.